Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Unpeng, hon you husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon in their relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. The Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, and the mutual broadcasting system presents by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Is your youngster a problem child in the classroom? Maybe it's because our schools themselves are such a problem. Maybe your child is sharing desk and textbook with another child who is also finding it hard to learn under such conditions. Nearly a million new students a year are entering schools that are sorely overcrowded and understaffed. 400,000 new teachers will be needed within the next 10 years. President Eisenhower has pointed the way by calling a special White House conference on education to take place in November. Meanwhile, states and communities are organizing their own conferences to discuss local school problems. Carry the ball for your community. Write for free information on how to hold a community conference. Write Better Schools to West 45th Street, New York 36, New York. Remember, better schools build better communities. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sergeant Preston knew there was a trading post somewhere in the forest, but he wasn't sure of its exact location, so he let King choose the trails they should follow. From his experience on many such patrols, the great dog knew his master wished to stop at every place where men were living, so he led the team straight to the post. The trader and his wife came out to meet the sergeant. Hello there. Hello, oh, oh, oh. Good afternoon. You're Tom White? That's right. This is my wife, Mary. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Oh, we're pleased to meet you. Come on in and get warm. Thank you. What brings you to the Black Forest, Sergeant? Are you on your way to the Indian village? Yes, but first I want to talk with you. Sit down, close to the stove. Thank you. Now, what's that sticking out of your pocket? An arrow. I don't know whether you're aware of it or not, but there's been a gold strike on Big Bear Creek a few miles to the south. Oh, I know, Sergeant. We haven't seen anyone but the Indians since September. You're our first real visitor in six months. Well, there are nearly a hundred miners who stake claims on the creek. This arrow was found sticking in the door of one of their cabins this morning, and a piece of paper was tied to the shaft. Oh, what's the printing on? Just one word. Go. Chief Wanook speaks English and can write a little, Sergeant. Well, undoubtedly, he's responsible. I'd like a little information about his tribe. How long have you been here? About a year and a half now. Had any trouble with the Indians? Well, no, not what you'd call trouble. You can't say they're friendly, Tom. No, but when they found out I wasn't going to hunt or trap in the forest, that all I wanted to do was trade for their pelt, they didn't make any difficulty about our thing. We've had no trouble. But you might have if you'd wanted to trap. Yes, indeed. This is their forest. Mm. They'll not stand for any outsiders moving in. So they warned the miners to leave. It might be better if they did. Well, I'll have a talk with the chief. If I can make him understand that these miners are only interested in gold, it may be all right. Oh, dear, the baby's awake. Excuse me, Sergeant. Oh, of course. Sergeant, will you stay for supper? Well, I'd like to, Tom, but I want to reach the Indian village before dark. It isn't far, only about five miles due west. It's getting dark already. I'll take advantage of your invitation some other time. At the Indian village, the sergeant found the chief proud, hostile, and unwilling to admit the right of anyone to invade the forest. But the sergeant finally persuaded him that since Bear Creek was at the southern edge of the forest, and that the miners' only interest was in gold, they wouldn't interfere in any way with the Indians trapping and hunting. He left the village for the chief's promise to keep the peace, and returned to the creek where he called a meeting of the miners. That's right down, men. Listen to the sergeant. Men, I've had a talk with Chief Wanook. I have his word that the Indians will leave you alone. 
But in return, I had to make a promise for you. I expect you to keep it. What sort of promise, Sergeant? Simply that you'll stay out of the forest. Why, sure, we'll agree to that. I mean completely. There's another stand of timber about five miles to the south, and there's plenty of game there. You may hunt there as much as you care to. Just keep out of the black forest. That understood? You bet. Good. Then you'll not have any trouble with Chief Wanook. I hope you'll all become millionaires. <laughs> the sergeant left the camp to continue his patrol, and the miners went back to work. There was no interference with their routine until one night, nearly a month later, a big black-bearded French-Canadian stopped his team in front of Matt Brady's cabin. Oh! 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 Howdy. Hey, you're new around here. We oui. Well, come on in. My name is Matt Brady. Uh, they call me Pierre Noir. In English, you say Black Pete. Right. Uh, sit down, Pete. I'll pour you some coffee. You uh, mean to take a claim? No. I am a hunter and a trapper. I think maybe I should caribou. Tell me to the miner. Well, that might not be a bad idea. Lord. Maybe you like to buy haunch of caribou right now, eh? I have it on the sled. I charge $20. Yes? Yeah? You shot a caribou around here? We? Oui, this afternoon. Where? In the forest to the north. Man alive. What is the matter? Well, here, drink your coffee. Naturally, there's no way you could have known about it, but that's forbidden ground. What you've done could start an Indian uprising. This might end up with all of us getting scalped. Ah, why should you be afraid of a few no-good Indians? There are more than a few. And it isn't a question of being afraid. The government recognizes that forest as Indian hunting ground. We're only obeying the law when we stay out of it. Me? I hunt where I please. Ah, listen. The tribe in that forest has had little contact with white men. And they don't make any distinctions between us. We'll be blamed for what you do. Now, if you want to hunt, hunt to the south, then we'll buy you meat. All right, all right. I hunt to the south. Okay. I only hope you weren't seen this afternoon. No one saw me. Did you skin the caribou where you shot it? We oui, and the skin is on my sled. What is left behind, the wool will soon clean up. You do not have to worry. Uh, you buy a hunch? Well, I suppose you might as well. Okay, uh, there's a shed out in back. You can hang the meat in there. I'll weigh out the dust. Oui, that is good. Uh, Matt, maybe you would let me spend the night here. Well, if you want to roll up on the floor. We oui, that will be fine. You are a good friend. We are a very good friend. Pete wasn't a hunter or a trapper. He was a thief. And that night, after he'd stretched out on the floor near the stove, he only pretended to go to sleep. Matt's bag of gold dust had been put back on a shelf at the foot of the miner's cot, and Pete meant to steal it. He waited until Matt began to snore a little. Then he threw aside his blanket and tiptoed across the room to the shelf. He reached for the bag. His hands were on it when one of the floorboards creaked beneath his weight. Hey, what? Matt woke up. There was enough light in the stove for him to see what Pete was doing, and he whipped out a gun from beneath his mattress. All right. That's where you belong, Pete. Oh, I only wanted to heft the bag to see how much was in it. Get away from there. We... But you do not think I meant to take it? That's just what I think. And we'll have a miners' meeting in the morning and see if the rest of them in agree with me. Matt called in his two nearest neighbors, Jonathan Moore and Harry Lang. Pete was bound hand and foot. The following morning, a miners' meeting was held in front of Matt's cabin. Matt told his story. Ah, he's guilty, all right. You want to stand guard on him till the sergeant returns from his patrol, Matt? No, and I don't want to go all the way to Dawson to press charges against him. The main reason I called this meeting was so you could all have a look at him. Now that you have, I say run him out of camp. Uh, outside his rope. Do we give him back his rifle? Yeah, he doesn't have much in the way of food on his sled. He'll oh. need the rifle to hunt. But not in the black forest, mister. You're heading south from here. Is that understood? We, oui, I understand. Then get going and don't come back. Black Pete headed south when he left the camp. But only until he was out of sight. Then he made a wide circle. And shortly after noon, he entered the black forest miles to the west of the camp. At first, this move was prompted by nothing more than an angry defiance of mass order. But as he entered the forest, he had an idea. Afraid of trouble with the Indian, eh? But I make trouble for them. I make plenty of trouble. Much! Much! The trail he was following led to the trading post. 
When he saw it in the clearing ahead, he stopped his team. Oh, 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 oh. No sense in showing myself there. I cut back and take another trail. I find what I'm looking for before long. But just then, two Indians entered the clearing from the west. Oh. Pierre grabbed his rifle from the sled and jumped behind the tree. He caught the first of the Indians in his sight. Trouble. They have plenty of trouble. <laughs> We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Check and see. See if your whole family, the youngsters, dad and mom, don't prefer delicious Quaker Pop rice and Quaker Pop wheat for breakfast. Check and see how much you like the sunny natural flavor of the good wholesome grain. The sunny natural flavor that old Mother Nature puts into it. These premium grains are never factory sweetened. Sugar is never added to them. And you mothers will double check on this. Some of your family will like their cereal not so sweet, while others will like it ever so sweet. Now here's the beauty of Quaker Pop rice and Quaker Pop wheat. The whole family can sweeten them with sugar or use no sugar at all, just as they prefer. You bet. That's the way to enjoy the sunny, natural flavor of the one shot from guns. Remember, Mom, to check and double check on the way everybody in the family goes for delicious, crisp, fresh, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. Now to continue. Inside the post, Tom White had seen the two Indians approaching the store. But as he turned to open the door, he heard two shots. He turned back to the window. The two Indians were lying face down in the snow. Mary. What's the matter? Did I hear shooting? Yes. Look, there's two Indians. <laughs> Are they dead? They've been shot. Where are you going? Oh, help me with this, Parker. You're not going out. Whoever shot them may shoot you. I hear a dog team heading south. Whoever shot them's clearing out. You can't be sure. And I can't just leave them lying there. Hand me my rifle. Oh, here. I'm coming with you. No. Tom held his rifle ready as he left the store. But he could see no one around the edge of the clearing, and he ran to the Indians. A moment later, Mary joined him. Mama, he's really, really... Dead. Both of them. Oh, how old Who could have done it? It must have been some other Indian. There's no one else in the forest. But why? How should I know? I suppose the only thing to do is take them inside and then go to the village and tell the chief. Oh. You don't have to do that. There's some more Indians I'm coming along the trail. Oh, Tom, why are they pointing at Thunderation, Mary. They think I did it. Oh, no. Quick, back inside the post. But if you explain to one, they may not wait for that. This is bad. About an hour later, Sergeant Preston drove into the mining camp, was immediately surrounded by the men. Matt told him of Black Pete's attempted robbery. Of course, if we'd have known you were coming in today, Sergeant, we'd have held him. There wouldn't have been any point, Matt. You mean because I didn't want to go into Dawson to press charges. You right? didn't have enough evidence to convict him. Look, I saw him with his hands on my bag of gold dust. And he said he was only lifting it to see how heavy it was. <laughs> A likely story. Touching something doesn't constitute possession. There was no real basis for a robbery charge. Well, that doesn't matter. He's gone and I still have my gold. But we're all a little worried about that caribou we killed in the forest yesterday. Yeah, and well, Sergeant, we were wondering if you'd go to Chief Wanook and tell him we had nothing to do with it. Yeah, in case he was seized. I shall. I may as well do it now. Mother King. King was looking toward the forest. And as the men turned with the sergeant, they saw a great column of smoke rising toward the sky some distance away. Hey, it's fire. Forest fire in the middle of the winter? That's no forest fire. The Indian village? It isn't that far away. My guess is the trading post. And the Indians have set fire to it. We'll soon find out. Find the oh, thing. Thing. Oh, oh, Would you like some of us to go with you? Sir? No, we'll be traveling fast. All right. Untang! Untang! But though King was working in harness and the team responded to his urging with all their speed, the early dusk of the Northland was falling over the trail and the fire was out by the time the post was reached. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. As the sergeant unharnessed King, he surveyed the ruins. The front of the building, the store, had been completely gutted. But evidently, when the store roof had fallen in with its heavy blanket of snow, the fire had been checked. The kitchen door was open, and the sergeant and King entered the building. The kitchen, black with soot, was almost intact. The living room beyond was a total wreck. The sergeant turned back to the bedroom that led off the kitchen. It was empty. 
From the floor, he picked up a knitted blue shawl. King sniffed at it. Fine, boy. Fine. <laughs> the sergeant gave the command reluctantly, afraid that King would start toward the mass of debris at the front of the building, that Tom, his wife, and Sonny were lying dead somewhere beneath the fallen roof. <laughs> it was with relief that the sergeant followed King through the kitchen and out of the post. Well, at least they weren't killed in here before the fire was set. But they may have been taken prisoner. King crossed the clearing and entered the forest, heading north. A freshly broken trail, packed hard, wound through the trees. North? This is away from the Indian village. I'm beginning to get the idea now, King. Somehow, Tom and his wife and baby escaped from the post. They took this trail and the Indians followed them. Keep going, boy. <laughs> An hour later, it was full night. But the northern lights began to sweep across the sky. There was no difficulty in following the trail. King never slackened his pace, even when he began to growl low in his throat. The sergeant noticed footprints leading off from the trail to the right and the left, until finally it was no longer hard-packed and clearly marked. There were only two sets of footprints leading on. The sergeant drew his gun. Indians all around us, boy? Never mind. Keep on. The trees began to thin out, and soon they found themselves in the open at the foot of a rocky hill that rose like an island in a sea of pines. Halfway up the slope, there was the opening of a cage, and the footprints in the snow led directly toward it. They must be safe, King. <laughs> Tom White challenged them as they neared the entrance of the cage. Don't move another step or I'll shoot. Tom, it's Sergeant Preston. Come in, Sergeant. Glad to find you safe. How's the baby? How safe? Indians all around us. No wonder you weren't shot as you came up the hill. One well, knows I represent the law. But why have they burned the post? Why are they after you? They think I killed two of the tribe. Why? Two Indians were shot as they were crossing the clearing in front of the post. Then some other Indians saw me bending over them with a rifle in my hand. Who shot them? We don't know. We heard someone driving away right after it happened. But we didn't see anyone. I decided it wasn't safe to stay at the post. I was certainly right about that. We saw the smoke burn completely. The store's gone. Oh. I'll have to talk with Winook and convince him you're innocent. A man called Black Seat was caught stealing from a miner last night. He has a rifle, and he'd like nothing better than to cause trouble between the miners and the Indians. But to kill two men in cold blood simply to make trouble. From what I've heard of him, he doesn't think of the Indians as human beings. Tell me, you heard someone driving away right after the shots were fired? South from the post, Sergeant. King may be able to follow the trail. First, we'll have a talk with one of The sergeant stepped into the open and raised both his hands high above his head. Hey, Wanook! I wish to talk with you. The sergeant stood motionless, hands still above his head, waiting. Minutes passed in utter silence. But then a voice called out from the cover of the trees at the foot of the hill. Long up here. Long up with the sergeant. The chief showed himself and walked slowly up the hill. When he was less than 50 feet away from the sergeant, at least 100 Indians poured over the top of the hill behind the sergeant and surrounded him completely. All of them were armed with shotguns, spears, and long knives. Tell your men to put down their weapons, Wanook. You're my prisoner. Trader, woman, papoose prisoner. You believe the trader shot two of your braves? That right. That isn't that? true. The braves were shot by a man named Black Pete. Black Pete? You know him? You know him? Uh, him killed Wanook's son two years back. Well, then. But Wanook think you play trick. Make up story. Black Pete, him afraid to come back here. Him plenty afraid. He has come back, and I mean to capture him. No, you make up story. You find out about Wanook's son, you say you capture Black Pete. But all you do is take traitor away. You go. Me take traitor, woman, papoose, to village. No. You come to village with Black Pete by morning, traitor lives. If you not come, him die. I'll do my best to find Black Pete. But under no condition must you harm the traitor. If you do, you'll be guilty of murder yourself. Warnock has spoken. Come on. Sergeant, Mary and I have been talking it over. Why don't you agree to his proposition? And let him hold you hostage? All three of us are prisoners now. This way, they'll at least let you go. And if you can catch my feet before morning, everything will be fine. But if I don't find him... It's worth a chance. They may kill us all right now if you don't take him. Well, I'll go. But I promise you that whether I find Pete or not, I'll be at the village before morning. And Wanook will have to kill me before he touches you or your wife or the baby. Wanook! Uh, me come. 
Warnock, that's a bargain. I have your word that no harm will come to the trader before morning. Ah, uh, Warnock promise. And you have my promise, Tom. Let's go, King. Oh, oh. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Watch the premiere of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon on television Thursday. Thursday is the big night, the premiere of the adventure series you've loved on radio. Starring Sergeant Preston, his big black horse Rex, and his wonder dog Yukon King. They're brand new stories, packed with adventure, mystery, romance, bravery, everything the whole family likes. Now you can actually see Sergeant Preston fighting hand-to-hand with desperados of the Yukon. Actually see his dog King leap at gold-hungry killers. You'll see magnificent scenery unfold before your eyes, rushing rapids of rivers, and later, terrifying avalanches and snow slides. It's something new and different in television. Brought to you on a coast-to-coast network by all the Quaker cereals. Quaker puffed wheat and rice, Quaker oats and mother's oats, Muffet shredded wheat, and Quaker Paco 10. Remember, it's every Thursday evening, starting this week, the exciting premiere of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon on television. Check your newspaper for the time and the station nearest you. Now to continue. Toward dawn the following morning, Mary White huddled in a blanket on the floor of the lodge where she and Tom were being held prisoner. She held Sonny close, crooning a lullaby. Tom had ripped away a corner of the deer skin that covered the window and was looking up. I've always complained about the length of the nights up here in winter. This one seemed mighty short. Is it getting light? It will be soon. What's going on out there? They're lighting a fire in front of the oh. chief's lodge. Oh, don't worry, Tom. The sergeant will be here. He gave you his promise. But if he comes alone, what good will that do? He knows what are they doing. I don't know. They're all running back and forth. There must be some reason for all that shouting. They're getting their weapons. Is anyone coming, the sergeant? It's dark to see the end of the village. Oh, wait a minute. The fire's springing up now. Yes, there's the sergeant. Alone? Alone. There are at least 50 men with him. The miners. But no sign of black sheep. Yes, a big black bearded man walking in front of the sergeant wearing handcuffs. He's done it, Mary. He's done it. Thank heaven. Sergeant, keep word. You come with me now. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank heaven. The sergeant, with his prisoner and with all the miners standing in a solid rank behind him, had stopped in front of the chief's lodge. Now, as Wanook advanced toward him, Black Pete sank to his knees. Sergeant, you cannot do this thing. Why should you be afraid of Wanook? You deny killing his son, you deny killing those two Indians at the post. You cannot leave me here with them. They will torture me, they will burn me alive. Why? All right, all right, I confess to you. If you only take me away, give me trial in Dawson. Confess what? I shot the chief's son two years ago. I shot those Indians yesterday. I wanted to make trouble between the Indian and the miner. I thought Wanook and his men would attack them, massacre them. That's why we found you hiding so close to the camp, waiting for a massacre, waiting to steal gold from dead men. Oui, oui, that is what I plan to do. I have a craziness in the head, Sergeant. It is right for you to arrest me, to put me in jail, but please... Please do not leave me here. I never had any intention of leaving you here. What that? No, Wanook. He's been placed under arrest in the name of the Crown. He'll be taken to Dawson and tried for murder. You must come with me and testify against him. There's no doubt he'll be found guilty and he'll be sentenced to hang. Only the law can execute a man. Uh, maybe it's better that way. It's the only way. No, Wanook. You may have been wondering why I brought all the miners with me. Little while, me afraid you make fight. You saw our raised hands. Uh Uh-huh. I brought them because they want to be friends. They want to smoke a peace pipe with you. And you should know that they helped me capture Black Pete. Uh, that's good. Me call them for pipe. The next, uh, the name, Muta. Sergeant, how can we ever thank Mrs. White, the men from the creek want to thank you. Yes, that's right. This is Matt Brady. Uh, How do you do? How do you do? Well, you see, it's this way, Mrs. White and Tom. We figured that by letting yourself be held as a hostage last night and giving the sergeant a chance to capture Pete, why, you saved us all a mess of trouble. Saved our cabins and our gold dust and maybe even our lives. So we decided we'd like to make you a little present. Here. What is it? Gold, of course. 
But we couldn't. Well, it's yours. You'll need it to stock your store again. There is no store. Yeah, well, I'll help you build a new one. What? That is, if it's all right, if one look for us, come into the forest. Uh, you friend of traitor, me friend of traitor, all friend of traitor help build new store. Good one, Oak. That means there'll be peace in the Black Forest from now on. And as soon as the law takes care of Black Tate, this case will be closed. <laughs> Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Here's a mutual note for you. Mutual is a network that has programs you can enjoy throughout the week. If you like question and answer fun, then you'll find there are all sorts of quiz programs you can listen to on Mutual. You can try and outguess the contestants and see if you know the right answer before they do. Even if you don't know, it's loads of fun listening to others. And you can learn a lot at the same time, too. And some of you boys and girls probably have favorite songs and favorite singers that you like to listen to. When you tune into Mutual, you'll hear many of the stars you like best, singing and playing the kind of music you enjoy most. Don't forget, too, there are programs of outdoor adventure and others of barn dance music and jamboree. There's plenty of good listening waiting for you on your mutual dial. Tune in every weekday afternoon for Mutual's famous programs, especially designed for adventure lovers. And remember to listen other times as well for different kinds of programs you like over most of these stations. When the notorious Herb Barton and his two friends robbed an old sourdough and his granddaughter of their gold and escaped, leaving King for dead, Sergeant Preston soon trailed them to their hideout. Great all of you, you're covered. Hey, look, Preston and another Mountie. Let him have lead, boys! Barton and his men were determined not to be taken. Can the Mounties escape their bullets and turn the tables on the killers? Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all Americans.